Well, hello there. <laughs> Welcome to the conference. Thank you. Tell me what you have in this box here. Uh, I have some office paper waste. I believe it's from Washington, actually. Uh, and they tend to <laughs> compile that in huge amounts. Right. Uh, so uh, what our enzyme company, we are an industrial enzyme company, and uh, we basically provide enzymes for the conversion of, of this kind of material uh, to fermentable sugars, which and then can turn, uh, be turned into uh, fuel ethanol. Uh, now, fuel ethanol is already today a huge product in the US uh, based from starch. Uh, so around 10% of the liquid uh, fuel supply for light duty vehicles in the, in the US is today manufactured in the Midwest out of corn. Right. Starch. So it's primarily corn in the US now, but the applications for future the, are the, the future for this is, of course, uh, to take uh, waste materials, so also agricultural waste materials, but wood waste, uh, uh, you know, municipal solid waste, and turn it into a, a renewable fuel source. Now, your parent company in Denmark, which has been around for 20, 30 years, uh, are they doing that now? We, we are today selling enzymes for the starch ethanol industry, and we have had a huge endeavor in the second generation, as it's called, cellulosic biofuels, for the last 10 years or so, uh, developing such enzymes, uh, leading to a launch of a product uh, this year, uh, which enabled our customers to then uh, produce it in an economically viable fashion. So it is happening here. Uh, it, 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 the first large-scale uh, demonstration-scale facilities is coming online uh, during the next one or two years. Uh, so we'll see the first larger output of cellulosic ethanol uh, in, in a few years to come. What do you think is the future for biofuels? Because there's a lot of different competing technologies now for cars, sure. from electric. And uh, sure, I think that the infrastructure set up in, the, uh, in, in how we transport ourselves today calls for still uh, some means of liquid transportation fuel, something that you can transport along and, and you can get far on, right? Uh, so, and, and, and ethanol today is actually uh, directly uh, used uh, in a blend with gasoline. And I can tell you in Brazil, uh, they actually run cars on, on a lot higher in ethanol in blend, 25, 30% uh, ethanol in Brazil already today. So it's doable, uh, certainly, uh, and to con convert to a different fuel molecule. So Europe is obviously a way ahead of, the, of America right now as far as biofuels go. Can we catch up? Uh, I wouldn't say, actually. I think the uh, US is actually leading the way. Uh, we have some nice uh, uh, words on paper in Europe, but the uh, but, uh, US is actually doing something about it. They have a renewable fuel standards, which is in place, legislative uh, in place, that, that in 2022 uh, demands a certain implant of uh, or, uh, that t uh, 30 billion gallons uh, of uh, liquid transportation fuels is manufactured uh, uh, in the US. So they actually have uh, the legislation in place for that. So uh, in many ways, the US is actually in the lead on this and also on, in the lead on the biomass to ethanol research. So it's really low ethanol research. Would you agree that ethanol's had a bit of a PR rap because of the corn um, ethanol? Sure. Ethanol derived from corn, yes. you know, people thought that was competing, taking food away from yes. livestock and yes. humans. Yes. How do we overcome that? Yeah, but, uh, it, it can be overcome, of course, with an increased output, acreage output uh, uh, on a cornfield. And that is already happen happening. And I think um, companies like Monsanto is predicting a, an increase of, uh, of a factor of two on corn output from a, a field with less actually input, resource input, in terms of fertilizers and, and chemicals and so on. So the, uh, it, during the ramp up of the whole ethanol industry in the US, uh, 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 corn output, uh, you know, export of corn uh, from the US have actually not decreased. Uh, so even though the country has been able to supply themselves with 10% of the liquid transportation fuel, uh, they are still uh, uh, have maintaining the same level of output for uh, food and feed. And I w would like to also add that within the uh, ethanol industry, uh, the, this, uh, the waste product, you could say, uh, uh, is actually used as a feed today. So it's, just not it's not just ethanol coming out of a plant. It's actually a feed component called DDG that is used in cattle feed and also in, uh, in uh, swine and, 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 and chicken feed. It's so using every part of the material, yeah, exactly. which is yeah, ah. good for not having any waste. And we're here at the Governor's Global Climate Summit. What are you hoping to achieve here today? I'm hoping to listen in and, and actually take part in, in what is happening in California today. Uh, I, I want to congratulate California on the, on, on the vote on Proposition 23 yes. uh, and uh, being uh, so forward in, in the thinking of actually establishing a low carbon fuel standard. So I think that's a, uh, that is just amazing. And then uh, being part of, of the whole 
uh, green tech venture now taking place in California uh, is, is just uh, amazing, uh, I think. Absolutely, you're in the right stage, it's exciting times and wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you Klaus very much.